Well, it's a disease that starts in the child that appears to be developmentally completely normal until the age of three years old, and then they start to have seizures. But we have learned over the last two years that some of these children actually have a language developmental delay. So if a physician should suspect a CLN2 disease, I would say in any child that has a newly onset of an unprovoked seizure, and if a physician sees such a child, he should go back in history and ask the pa parents about the language development, early language development, even though if a child is normal in the language at the moment, it might still be that there has been some delay in the three years prior to this. And if there has been some delay, then I would highly recommend to exclude CLN2 disease. And in some cases, actually, you might then diagnose a patient with CLN2 disease. But in most cases that we get referred to, the diagnosis was made much later, up to two years later, and by that time, the children already are ataxis, they lose their ability to walk, they lose their language ability, so they do not speak anymore, and they have a severe movement disorder, and seizures become much more apparent and much more severe. To have a clear diagnosis is important for the family they need to know what's wrong. And if they have a clear genetic diagnosis, we can offer them genetic counseling so we can prevent other siblings to be affected by the disease if there will be more siblings in that family. We can improve the management of the child, the medical management. We can um, give them a little more advice how to best give care to their child. And this long odyssey for with the quest for a diagnosis is over and this gives them more quality of life, they can spend more time with their child rather than in the hospital while still seeking a diagnosis.